Today on the bottom line, we've got Nate Langson and Kevin Toffel to talk video games, particularly Mass Effect 2. Try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Visit gotomeeting.com slash techpodcasts. Mass Effect 2 has been out for a little bit and it's getting rave reviews. Nate, you just did a review of this game. First, could you break it down and explain to the, the audience who may be unfamiliar with this game, what is Mass Effect 2 and will fans of the original game like the sequel? Well, okay, so Mass Effect 2 basically uh, is a, a sci-fi RPG. So you take on the role of someone called Commander Shepard and essentially you're fighting for mankind in the galaxy and there's loads of dialogue and sort of talking to other characters and getting to know people's backstories and things like that. But there's also an element of action and uh, kind of third-person shooter, so going around and killing a bunch of aliens and stuff, which is pretty cool. The, the, the reason why I was so interested in Mass Effect 2 is that I actually hated the first game. Uh, I really hated it. I thought it was one of the worst games I've played in 2008. So I went into this game quite skeptical and have come out of it thinking it's one of the best sci-fi games I've ever played, ever. Um, and I'm a huge RPG nut, so you know that's that's pretty sort of uh, quite interesting for me. Ke Kevin, um, I'm sorry, uh, Kevin, for the ads. This game looks really epic. I know when that ad comes on TV, I, it looks like a, a freaking movie's breaking out. More generally, do you think that games have gotten too complex for the casual gamer? Do you think they're bringing in new kinds of gamers because of their complexity? Because this thing isn't like a four or five hour game. This isn't something you play like for just a little bit. This is something you commit a lot of time to. It's like Nate, I think it was what 50, 60 hours for this game. Is that right? Uh, about 50. Yeah, I, I spent about 45 hours on it or mm. so, which is quite average, I suppose, for, for an RPG. So, Kevin, who do you think this is days. appealing to? Well, you actually just hit a couple good points. One, I haven't seen as many television ads for any other video game other than Mass Effect at this point, which really blows me away. They're really trying to widen the audience and the appeal. Two, talking, Nate just said how much time he had to invest in it. I look at these types of games as an investment. So who are they for? They're for people who have the time or are willing to spend the time. Uh, it, it's not something you can casually sit down and, and eat in bite-sized chunks either. I think it's the kind of game that you need to sit there for a couple hours to really make some progress. So are games too complex and who's it for? I, I think there's still a wide variety of, of fun shoot 'em up games that you can just play for half an hour, an hour. And then there's the investment type games where you get a rich backstory just like Mass Effect 2. What about you? There's, there's a good sort of happy medium in it for Mass Effect because one of the things that I found is that when I was reviewing it, I was thinking, you know, you could go into this game with, you know, maybe planning to spend 12, 16 hours playing a game, which is sort of average for sort of most modern games that aren't RPGs. And you could pretty much go through that and just explore the main story and you know, kill some people when you need to, uh, if that's what you're into, and that's fine. But if you want to, you can really drill down into the sort of the character's backstories and side quests and missions, and there's whole loads of stuff that you can really get into there. And I'd say, you you know, you could easily spend 60, 70, 80 hours on this game if you wanted, but you could probably race through it in maybe 10 if all you wanted was sort of the main meat, as it were. Um, I mean, there's, there's games like Fallout 3. I spent about 180 hours playing Fallout 3, including all its DLC, um, which is just... So look back and think of the amount of days that I've spent. I mean, I could I could write a book in that time almost, you know. And and and, and instead, all I have are like a thousand achievement points and you know a talking point on a podcast that I did that. And like, it's kind I'm of actually, it's bizarre. I, sorry, go I was going to say I was going to say I'm actually curious, Nate, that what was so different about Mass Effect Two compared to Mass Effect One? And the reason I say that is because one, I absolutely love Mass Effect One, and I haven't yet played Mass Effect Two. And I'm curious, what's the difference there? You know what? I, I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know what's so different. What I found so different, like when I was playing through Mass Effect One, I was frequently bored and I was getting distracted and going into other games. And maybe I just had more to do at the time than I had sort of in gaming. Maybe I also had more gaming distractions at the time. Uh, and so I'm quite tempted to go back and try and play it again. I just remember not being pulled into it. Like the characters didn't captivate me, and I just found it getting. So the dialogue was just annoying me, and I just didn't care about the characters. And an RPG, that's really bad, because there's so much character involvement in, in these stories that if you don't care about the characters, you're pretty much not going to care about the game. Whereas for Mass Effect 2, I don't know, I, I just found that the characters were more interesting, and uh, the way the game worked, and, and how you sort of advanced and leveled up and things was just, was just really different. Um, and, so I'm not and, sure. 
And see, that this is one of the compelling features that I look for in a game. You can go and shoot up whatever you want in some games, but in Mass Effect, especially in the first one, probably in the second, the choices that you make in those dialogue situations really do affect the outcome of the game and your characters and, and how they respect you and work as a team. So, you know, there is that complexity in there that whether you like it or not, you've got to be part of it in order to navigate to the end of the game. Nate, didn't they behi- yeah, go yeah. out and hire uh, more voice actors? And I guess they obviously spend more time on the story because... Are the cutaway scenes more compelling? I mean, that, is that the big difference? I mean, is the gameplay any different? Or is, is it the real difference just the, uh, the interstitial story? I think it's the characters, really. Um, I just found that the characters themselves were so interesting. You know, there's a couple of, there's a really interesting scientist uh, guy um, that you pick up quite early on in the game. And he's just such a weird character that you just like hearing speak. And, and I just found that I wanted to keep talking to him because I just liked the things he said and the way he said them. And that made me then care more about his backstory. And that, you know, was, was a few hours of gameplay right there. And there's probably 10 main characters that you sort of have on your team. Um, so that was a huge difference. I didn't care about any of the characters in the first game. I didn't even like my character. So, you know, if anything <laughs> happened to them, not really bothered. You know, if they want to shoot me in the head, fine. I don't really care. Whereas in this one, I genuinely cared about these other people. All right, guys, I think we're pretty much out of time. Our thanks to Nate Langson and Kevin Tofel for being on the show, guys, again. Uh, you can find Nate online at wired.co.uk, and you can find Kevin's stuff at jkontherun.com. You can find TechV everywhere, of course. You can even subscribe to all of our shows. The info is at techv.com. I'm Aya Zaktar, and thanks for watching. This show brought to you by Petco. Go to petco.com slash techv10 or use promo code techv10 and get 10% off any order.